Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Bridget. I'm a family nurse practitioner and a nurse educator. In today's video, I will be going over six dimensional analysis questions courtesy of nursing.com. Nursing.com is an excellent resource if you are in nursing school. They have courses, cheat sheets, practice questions, study plans, sim clocks, they have videos, and their courses and videos can guide you through nursing school so that you can consolidate studying and focus on what you really need to know. If you want to learn more about uh, nursing.com, check out my affiliate link below. The first question is, the physician orders an IV infusion of D5W, one liter, to infuse over the next eight hours. This is also a dextrose 5% water. To infuse over the next eight hours. The IV tubing that you are using delivers 15 drops per milliliter. What is the correct drip rate of flow? When a question asks you for a drip rate, the answer that they are looking for is in drops per minute. So always start with what is ordered. Feel free to pause here, try to work through the question, and then come back for the answer. I'm going to show you how I worked it out, and then I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how uh, nursing.com worked it out. Always start with what is ordered, what do we need to find, and we're going to put it over here on the left side. And we need to find drops per minute. So that's the unit of measurement I am putting here on the left side. And then whatever is up top here is usually like, for example, if it was just milliliters, you're going to put milliliters up here. Um, in this case, we have drops, so we're going to put drop here also. So what has drop in it? And it's this right here, 15 drops per milliliter. So 15 drops per milliliter. And then instead of adding the extra step that I will show you that nursing.com did, um, I converted this because I know that we needed to have, this is drops per milliliter and this is one liter. We need to convert this to milliliter. And when all we're doing when we're moving down to a smaller unit of measurement, we move the decimal three places or also known as multiply by a thousand. So you, here's a decimal, right? One, two, three, one liter becomes a thousand milliliters. You need to memorize that one liter equals a thousand milliliters. And what is a thousand milliliters married to? We're infusing this over eight hours. So we're infusing 1000 milliliters over eight hours. How do you know where you're putting milliliters up top? Because we need to cancel out milliliters. So milliliters is here. We're going to put milliliters up top here over eight hours. Now we need to cancel out eight hours or the hour measurement because we need minutes. So one hour has 60 minutes in it. And that's how we get drops per minute. All of our unit of measurements have canceled out. Remember when it's the same unit of measurement and it's across from each other, you cancel it out. So now we truly are with drops left for with drops per minute. That's a good way of checking yourself to making sure that you did your dimensional analysis correctly, that you set up the cor the equation correctly. So 15 times a thousand, and then you multiply eight times 60. When you divide it, it gives you 31.25. You're going to round because there's, you're not giving half a drop. So this is a two. And remember if it's four or less, you round down. If it's five or above, you go up. So it's 31 drops per minute. This is how nursing.com did it. They did 15 drops per milliliter, and then they did a thousand milliliters over one liter, one liter over eight hours. They added this extra conversion here and I just converted it before, but it still works. Um, 15 drops per milliliter, you have drops here, you do drops here, milliliters, milliliters is going to cancel out, one liter, one liter here, cancels out, divided by eight, one hour has 60 minutes, you get 31 drops per minute. Question number two, a thousand milliliter solution of D5 normal saline with 20,000 units of heparin is infusing at 20 milliliters per hour. How many units of heparin is the patient receiving each hour? So what are we looking for? And go ahead and feel free to pause again, try to work it out and then come back. We're looking for units. So units is going to be here on the left side. And if units is here, what's going to be up top? If you said units, you are correct. How many units of heparin is the patient receiving each hour? Units per hour. We're going to put units up top here. What has units? 20,000 units of heparin is infusing at 20 milliliters per hour. Oh, so a 1,000 milliliter solution, so think of a of D5 normal saline, it's 1,000 mLs, and in that 1,000 ml bag, it has 20,000 units. So 20,000 units over 1,000 milliliters, and then we need to cancel out milliliters, so milliliters is going to be up top here. 
what has milliliters in it? We have 20 milliliters per hour, so 20 mls per hour. This one was fairly straightforward. You're just going to go across 20,000 times 20 and then over 1,000 and you get 400 units per hour. Nursing.com and I solved this in the exact same way. Units per hour, 20,000 units. Thorazine, this is a first generation antipsychotic. Thorazine 37.5 milligrams has been ordered for your patient. The only available dosage is 25 milligrams per milliliter. What amount will you give? So the keyword here is oral solution. So it's going to be liquid. So we need a volume, right? We, we're not going to need milligrams. We're not going to need grams. We need milliliters because milliliters is liquid form. So anyways, milliliters is going to be here on the lot because that's what we're looking for. What is milliliters married to? We have one milliliter has 25 milligrams. So we're going to put one milliliter here over 25 milligrams times 37.5 milligrams because that's the order. And then when you do the math, it comes out to 1.5 mLs. If you were to get a ginormous answer like 500 milliliters and it's an oral solution, double check the order to make sure that you did it correctly. Same thing if you have to give like 20 tabs, chances are you did something wrong. Nursing.com, same thing, milliliters here, milliliters here, over 25 milligrams, 37.5 milligrams per dose. Question four, you are to give 90 milligrams of Inderol. The available dosage strength is a scored 60 milligram tablet. What amount will you give? So we're giving a tablet here, tablet. That's going to be our, instead of like unit of measurement, that's what we're giving. So what's ordered a tab? We're going to put tab here. We're, we'll do this with dimensional analysis, but you technically could have done this in your head, but it's safer to just write it out and be on the safe side. But look at this, right? You need to give 60 milligrams of Indrol. One tablet is 60 milligrams, right? So if you do the math, right, how do you get to 90 with something that's 60, right? Well, you have one tab that's 60. It's kind of like counting change, right? And then if you take half a tag, half a tab is going to be 30 milligrams and six, 60 plus 30 equals 90. And that's essentially what we're doing here. We have a tab, one tab has 60 milligrams. The dose is 90 milligrams. Pretend that this has a fraction bar over one. And when you divide 90 over 60, you get 1.5 and you're giving 1.5 tabs. Digoxin 0.5 milligrams is ordered. Available tablets contain 250 micrograms per tablet. How many tablets will you give? So once again, the unit of measurement is tablets is what we're looking for. So we're going to put tabs here. One tab has 250 micrograms per tablet. Oh, the other thing that I did, um, and this nursing.com did this one different. I will show you how they did it. But I try to keep the problem as short as possible. So what I did is because this unit of measurement is in, is in micrograms, right? That's what the tablet comes in. So that's what we need to convert the milligrams to. I did another YouTube video where I just, I went more like, this is more intermediate dimensional analysis and I went super basic in my other videos. So make sure you look up my dimensional analysis videos. If you're confused right now, I broke it down even more, but I made this chart and we're going from milligrams to micrograms. So we are going from milligrams to micrograms. And whenever we're moving down, the number gets bigger. We're multiplying by a thousand whenever we're moving up. So if we were going from milligrams to grams, we would be dividing by a thousand or AKA moving the decimal to the left place. If we're going down, you move the decimal to the right hand place. And in that video, I talk about how to remember it. And I said that kilograms is for, um, King Arthur, right? This is completely made up. King Arthur didn't have kids with Guinevere, but if it helps you remember like King Arthur, Guinevere is the wife. She's a little less large than King Arthur, but then we have Millie, their daughter. She's less big. She's smaller than Guinevere. And then Mickey, their child is the smallest because he's a baby. So we have King Arthur's the biggest unit. Then we have Guinevere. Then we have Millie. Then we have Mickey. So as we're going down, we're multiplying by a thousand. If we're going up, we are um, going to the left. The way to think of this is like, it's if you have grams and you're moving to smaller bowls, right? Pretend that this is like, this is the largest bowl, right? So 
we'll say that three bowls make one large bowl of this since we're moving the decimal to three places, right? So the smaller unit measurement we go, the smaller the bowls are. We need more bowls to be able to fill the same amount of quantity, if that helps you out. So anyways, I went ahead and converted to micrograms. So we moved the decimal three places. That's one, two, three. So it's 500 micrograms. So micrograms is here at the bottom. We're going to put micrograms here up top and we're giving two tabs. So you're giving two tabs. I will show you the other way of doing it is that we have one tab is 250 micrograms and then a thousand micrograms is one milligram and remember like this is just to cross out this is the unit of measurement right a thousand milligrams is the same thing as one milligram we put one milligram here at the bottom so that we can can like this unit of measurement cancels out and then this is going to cancel out with this so um then we're left with tab so um one one thousand micrograms is the same thing as one milligram times 0.5 milligrams and you multiply across and you get two tabs either way is right do whatever makes your heart happy last question administer dopamine five mic this one is a slightly more tricky administer dopamine five micrograms per kilogram per minute dopamine is mixed 400 milligrams in 250 mls the patient weighs 164 pounds how many milliliters per hour will be administered so we see that we do need to convert this to kilograms. I went ahead and converted it before the problem. Again, I want to make my problem shorter versus the length of a football field. So 164 divided by 2.2 equals 74.5 kilograms. But you can convert it within the problem if you feel like it. I will show you how nursing.com did that as well. But you do need to know that, that for a pound, you have to divide by 2.2 kilograms. That's how you get kilograms. So how are we doing this problem? What are we looking for? We're looking for milliliters per hour. We're going to put milliliters per hour here on the left side. And then what's going to be up top here? Of course, milliliters, because that's the order it follows. Whatever is here, we're putting up top here. Milliliters per hour, 250 mLs over 400 milligrams. Why? Because it says it right here. Dopamine is mixed. So you have a bag that's 250 milliliters and inside of it, they've put dopamine 400 milligrams. I went ahead and converted micrograms to milligrams because we have milligrams here. And again, I just wanted to shorten the problem. So we're moving from, from smaller to larger. So the decimal is going to move to the left three places. One, two, three. That gives us 0 0.005 milligrams over kilograms per minute, one kilogram per minute, right? How many kilograms are they? They are 74.5 kilograms. So kilogram here is going to cross out, but we're still left with minutes over here. So in order to cancel out minutes, 60 minutes has, uh, there's 60 minutes in one hour. And when you multiply 250 times 0 0.005 times 74.5 times 60 over, over 400, you get 14 mLs per hour. Let me show you nursing.com's way. So they did 250 mLs. We start the same, right? We kind of just add the conversion. They add the conversion factors in the middle. So 250 mLs over 400 milligrams. So right here, one milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms because they need to cancel out milligrams. So they did that. And then they're crossing out micrograms by putting five micrograms per kilogram per minute. And then one minute here and here so 60 minutes in one hour there's one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds this patient weighs 164 pounds so when you multiply 250 times 5 times 60 times 164 and then you multiply 400 a thousand times 2.2 you divide it by what i just said before up top over this you get 14 mls an hour so same answer two different ways to do it it's technically the same thing it's just that um i'm converting like other stuff to make it slightly shorter thank you so much for watching make sure that you hit that like button and you smash that subscribe button i currently have a goal of hitting 30,000 subscribers i've been at this for three years and um still haven't reached it <laughs> um so it would mean a lot if you subscribed and keep in mind that it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe and you can always unsubscribe later until next time